The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look at the German DAX. As you can see, uh, it is continuing its downtrend with a little bit more force to the downside this morning. Uh, Deutsche Bank stock is considerably under the $7 level, and we believe it's going to go to somewhere between 5 and $3 a share when the German government will say, we now take control of the bank. Whether that'll happen or not remains to be seen. The next one we want to look at also is under a great deal of pressure, and that is the FTSE. As we take a look at this, you'll see the FTSE has got an ABCD structure down there, some around 7,000. We're 200 uh, handles away from that. Uh, we just missed the 61% retracement on the upside by about five points, and now we're heading down, it looks like, uh, considerably lower. Uh, we've been saying that for quite some time, but, you know, whether that's going to continue that way or not, you know, we, we really don't know. But, you know, the good part about this is, boys and girls, nobody else does either. Now, there's a couple of big things that are happening. I want to bring this to your attention today. This is from uh, our good friend, uh, Rich Anderson from Anderson Capital Management. He gets this from one of his chart services. I think it's QT charts or something like that. And you notice that they're giving price objectives you can see here of December corn at 454.7 487.2 but just look at this uh this is actually 2 days behind if you look at that 450 uh, 454 level that's the key level to look at but what we want to do is to look at it the way we look at it and that's what's going to be interesting because if you take a look at this this is the same chart only we put our patterns in it and we put our ratios in it you can see that 454 level uh, we got up there 454 uh, and the three quarters that was the 1.618 expansion of the high in June and it's also on the downside it was a 1.618 expansion down there where you can see the the uh, the butterfly pattern bottom uh, we're down at uh, four, uh, 365 when the uh, tariffs, whatever it was, was pushing the market lower. Here we are, a uh, dollar a bushel, uh, $4,500 higher, and you can't find anybody that wants to sell it. But boys and girls, if 1.618 brought you to the dance on the downside, you'd think that 1.618 should tell you to leave the dance on the upside. The problem is people get really, really emotional because you have fear and greed. And of course, fear is a greater emotion than greed. So uh, here we are at greed, but we hit the number. My uh, my assumption is we made a top today in uh, December corn. How much of a top it's going to be, I don't know. And I don't even know if it's going to work or not. All I know is that it went to 454. That was the number uh, we were looking at. And whether that's going to be the case or not, you know, we have to wait and see uh, what's looking. But if we look at the, if you remember yesterday, I'm doing this in the midst of a big weather market, folks. So, you know, give me a little slack because a lot of this stuff doesn't work. Some of it does. Anyway, look at this weekly chart going back over the last five years. You'll see that the 61% retracement comes in here at uh, 442. Da -da, guess where July corn is? And guess what? We've taken out the highs of 2015, 2016, 2018, and we're sitting right at a 61% retracement. Why new crop Christmas corn is sitting at a 1.618 retracement. Hmm, expansion. Hmm, wonder if that means anything or not. We'll have to wait and see. Let's take a look here at the weather map that we see across Europe. You know, we're having trouble here with wet weather. Just take a look at what's happening in Europe, all across Europe, you can see uh, it's just other than uh, other than Spain, you can see almost all of Europe, Italy, you know, Germany, all these places are uh, just inundated with uh, wet weather. There's no wet weather in the UK, as you can see over there, but uh, <laughs> that that doesn't really mean a lot because there's not too much of a corn or soybean crop uh, over in the UK. So. Just watch that as we uh, go through uh, some of these things. As far as the S&P, folks, we have a very interesting um, 
uh, situation where the market just keeps getting weaker and weaker. Now, last night, we hit some very important support here. I want to bring it up to you over the past uh, the past five days. We did make a 1.618 expansion down there at 27.82. We had a little bit of a three drive to a bottom pattern. As you can see with that ABCD format, we've had a little bit of a bounce. But I think any bounce that you get up to that 2804 is going to be screaming, please sell me, please sell me, please sell me. And the reason for that is it's a 382 off that high that we made two days ago. Plus, it's going to be where the resistance was way back on May 23rd. That comes in at 2804, i.e. 2803. Uh, whether we get there or not, you know, remains to be seen. So we'll keep watching that. Uh, as we go through uh, and looking at uh, some of these uh, other markets that we're that we're paying close attention to, I've asked to uh, yeah the fibs work pretty good uh, Maria. The problem is they don't work all the time and they're very confusing to a lot of people. And the reason why is the fact that they they don't understand that it's not just one fib number. It's a combination of fib numbers coming coming together from other swings so you put them together you know with the with the patterns and that that's really what the whole thing is all about that's the that's the real thing uh, to pay you know really close attention to uh, the, at least that's the way I look at it whether that's the right way or not you know I, I really don't know let's take a look here at a couple of currencies that are really at real critical points these are cross rates that we uh, look at all the time uh, here is the uh, British pound again. We want to bring this up because uh, it's gone down there again, tested that same bottom. You'll see that's the big ABCD pattern going back to uh, January. Uh, that is a Gartley pattern. You have a perfect ABCD. Uh, everything is set up. It might not work, of course, but that's what uh, that's what it's looking at. Now, I want to share with you uh, another cross rate. This is the British pound. Uh, versus the uh, Japanese yen. I've got this marked wrong, folks, because I did it in the middle of the night as usual. But you'll see here that this is, uh, hold on a second here. You'll notice that it says GBP USD cross rate. That's not correct. If you look at the far left, it's the GDP uh, Japanese yen cross rate. So it's pulling down. It's got the same pattern, but it's a different cross rate. So let's remember, this is the British pound versus the Japanese yen. It's telling us that the pound should start to gain against the yen. Now, whether it does it or not, we don't, we don't really know, but we'll see uh, what's going on. I don't know what LYC means, Terry, so I'm, I'm, that joke is over my head. So we'll have to wait and see. All right. Uh, Lycus. Oh, here it is. Linus Corporation, rare earth metal, reminder, big news. Oh, they're supposed to, uh, the China is going to stop uh, selling us rare earth uh, Rare earth stuff, whatever that is. That's probably something like palladium or something like that. Speaking of palladium and platinum, folks, platinum hit that hit that flat out moment of truth number down there at uh, you'll see it as we posted here this morning. I don't know if it's held so far, but uh, it went right down to that seven ninety two level. Uh, my beeper has not gone off, so I assume that it's still above that level, but uh, we'll watch that. I don't know anything. Uh, about rare earth stuff folks i have about the rarest earth i'm thinking about is corn wheat and soybeans those are the ones that i'm uh, sort of paying attention to this morning and when we get back i wanted to share with you just a little bit longer term view uh, on the wheat so you'll get an idea of some of these numbers and how they fit together 877-927-6648 The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at tfnn.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I posted a chart of the long-term weekly uh, chart of wheat. Uh, the reason why I did this is twofold. Uh, one is that uh, it goes back about five years, and you can see the big swings that are in there. I've marked uh, some of the lunar, uh, lunar, lunar and solar eclipses just to show you that sometimes they're spot on. Other times they're off a couple of days. Sometimes they don't work at all. But the primary reason to bring this to your attention is in Dr. Lowe's second book, well, I think, no, it might have been his fourth book, The Evolution of Technical Analysis. He spends the first uh, 50 pages of that book looking at, uh, you know, the astrology. So we'll see. There's no wheat chart. Let's just get it up here. Let's see if we can. I thought I had that problem solved. Let's see if we get it up. Uh, uh, I think that's it. Okay. Yep. I think we're up okay now with the uh, wheat chart. But you'll notice that the patterns that are there, you know, they're, they're, they work pretty good. You know, like other things, you know, they don't work all the time. But uh, it basically tells you whether there's more buying or selling. What we're looking at now in wheat is we're seeing a market that is rallying up to a 61% retracement on the daily at the same time that we have this monster weather market that is going on out there. So it's going to be interesting to see, you know, how this unfolds uh, over the next uh, few days. I did have the weather map for China, but frankly, I didn't think it would be interesting to share it with you. But the one for Europe was certainly good. Uh, cotton, I believe, Ruby, has ta uh, has made a, a significant bottom. And I'll get this up here so we can take a look at it, cotton, the fluff, because I, I believe here on the weekly chart, you're going to see this as a very, very positive, uh, very, very positive chart. You had a three drive to a bottom pattern on the weekly, setting right at the 78% level at 65. We've had a good, strong rally after that, and that tells us that we're looking at something that could be much better. I know you're going to ask me about sugar the sweet next, Ruby, and that's really looking good. Mr. Z has already posted the fact, I believe we got above 95, we really rallied about six or seven cents off that triple bottom. So the sugar is acting pretty good, and co cocoa doesn't need any help at all. It still looks pretty good. So uh, the softs are doing okay, uh, and of course, we'll see. Now, you know, with these markets turning, especially what we've had in the grains now, the whole world wants to buy them. Uh, and they're probably right. But the uh, main thing is, is that uh, it's going to change that chart that uh, Dennis Gartman talked about. Remember, 
I posted it several weeks ago. I don't need to post it again, and I put it into the newsletter a couple times. It shows the relationship between stocks and commodities. When commodities are bottoming, stocks are topping, and we are certainly topping, folks. The key to this market, and this is my two cents worth, and remember, you get what you pay for. So here's the two cents for what it's worth. Let me get it up here so we can, uh, uh-oh, please tell me I got it. I know I have it. Ah, I do have it. I have this fixed out. Now, how to do this? I don't have to, I don't have to fight for it anymore, folks. Let's take a look here at the uh, E-mini, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at it on the daily basis. You notice that uh, where we are now, we're trading a little below the price that I posted this yesterday. I think we're at 27.85. It looks like we're heading down to 27.30. We've been talking about that for a very long time. Now, something significant happened last night at that 78% level at 27.82. That was one of the gaps that we had on the daily chart. I don't remember which one it is here, but it's on the S&P cash, and that was one of the gaps that was there. So let's remember, this E-mini goes through overnight stuff, whereas the S&P cash does not. So the ABCD structure here, to me, is what is very important. This would be the very first ABCD correction since we made the low on December the 26th. And where does it come in at? Exactly at the 382 level. So we'll see. Now, you'll notice they're talking about jumping the creek. Well, that's where you see the 78 and 61% level. We held that for a couple of days. We've rallied up to a uh, uh, 2898, and then bada bing, bada boom, we're 100 handles lower very, very quickly here in the last six or seven, eight days. And it looks like we're heading down to 2730. Now, regarding the date, you know, and the, the, the timing part is so difficult, folks, but. The date is based on what we're looking at in the Bradley. And, you know, frankly, you know, when the Bradley works, it, it really works. And when it doesn't work, you know, well, this is not saying very much. It doesn't work. But if we take a look at this, uh, just quickly look at this one more time, you'll see that number uh, they were looking at is around June 6th or June 7th. That's next uh, next week. That's about, let me see, yeah, well, it's about eight, nine days from here. So that'll be like next uh, Thursday or Friday, it looks like. Let's just check this out for a quick move here. Yeah, June 6th would be a, whoo, that would be a Thursday. So let's keep an eye on that. That might be uh, something that would be uh, pretty interesting to see. That also happens to, to be the day before Jim Twentyman's birthday. So he was born the day before D-Day. So that's, uh, that's interesting. Okay. Now, uh, we want to, uh, oh, <laughs> a little human interest story. My eight-year-old grandson is really interested in World War II. My God, he knows every single fact about this stuff, and he's studying all about, uh, all about Europe and stuff, and he was talking about the Berlin Wall with me uh, on Skype, and he said, I'll bet you don't know when the Berlin Wall came down. And I told him, oh, yes, I do. It was November the 9th, 1989. And the only reason I remember that, folks, is I was writing a newsletter, Astro Cycles, and I made a prediction there that on August the, or on J uh, November the 9th, there would be something so significant happening in the world that it would be on every major newspaper in the world, hands down. And if it isn't, I'll give you a free year subscription to Astro Cycles. That's what I did. I mean, <laughs> talk about crazy. Anyway, um, that Tom's O'Brien's birthday is uh, today. Happy birthday. Or is that November 9th? Oh, well, whatever. Anyway, that was the, the fall of the Berlin Wall. And, uh, and uh, little Avery was really shocked to know that, uh, that, that I knew that number. But that, that's what happened. And it was on every paper. But what did it do to the market? Absolutely nothing. When Reagan said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall, you know, he did tear it down, but actually it didn't mean anything short term, but longer term, it was the reason for these huge bull markets that were happening. Because if you looked at the crash of 2000, or 1987, on um, October the 20th, that made a 61, it was a day after the crash, made a slightly lower low. On October the 20th, it made a 61% retracement on the long-term low going back to August the 9th of 1982. And from there, we've gone up. People ask me, is this a major high that we're looking at? I will be able to tell you that if we go below 2,700. Below 2,700, we've made major damage has occurred. The first signal is it goes below 
2720. It should hold 2730, but if it doesn't, you know, that's the ABCD and these fail, that's it. The key time to watch, of course, is this uh, uh, June 6th level, and then we'll, we'll see uh, what happens. But if it works that way, it's going to set out a really beautiful trading map uh, to look at for a rally and then a big move down. Because as you can see from that Bradley model, after August, it's uh, heading south. And, you know, it don't always work. But, you know, like old Yogi said, you got to dance with the girl you took to the dance. So we'll see what happens with it. But right now it's going lower. And if we take out 82, 2782, we're heading down to 2730. In my humble opinion, 877-927-6648 if you want to call in. The lines are jammed right now, folks, but they'll open up soon. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. <laughs> Okay, folks, I posted a chart of the uh, July soybeans. Uh, it doesn't show the headings, of course, um, but uh, that's what July soybeans, you, they're, they're quite a bit below the level. We've had a big run. You know, they're following wheat and corn. But the key to watch, of course, is the uh, is the December corn. That's the one that is the uh, hit the hit the numbers spot on. We also hit the numbers spot on in the wheat. Uh, the July soybeans are not the lead. You really want to watch the uh, the November soybeans, that's the one. We, let's just do that because that's something I think for grain traders and, well, for anybody, it's it's important to watch what the other markets are doing. But we'll take a look here. 
at the uh, at the November bean contract and uh, see what it's doing here this morning. Uh, it's not nearly as strong. It's only gone up to the 61% retracement. Let's get this up and then we'll be able to see. Give me one second and we'll have this posted for you. And if I've done this correctly and it's done what it's supposed to be doing, it's going to be coming you or post haste and here it comes. By golly, this thing is actually working. Holy cow. Shut the front door and raise the rent. There, we made the 61% retracement up there at 9.15. We're trading at 9.04 uh, right now, whether that means much or not. I don't know. Folks, I post these patterns for your interest and stuff. You know, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But uh, the key is that uh, you have to be able to protect yourself with stops and then also being able to uh, take responsibility. By the way, there's some people that get by without using a desktop. In other words, the market, they don't have a stop in the market. But those people are very, very experienced and they trade an equity stop. In other words, if they're in something like, uh, let's say, soybeans, and they were to gap up 15 cents, and they were willing to risk about five, they're going to take that extra 10 cent heat and just get out, because that's going to damage, uh, you know, equity. Like if you're trading a very large account, you know, well over lay like, seven figures, you wouldn't have to risk more than, you know, a half of one percent, you know, more than five thousand dollars at any one time. So, I know it seems like a lot, but that's that's how they. They sometimes, you know, handle these things. So uh, I think it's important that 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 we recommend this, or you know, bring it to your attention because I think it is pretty important. If you'll remember, um, one of the things that we mentioned the last couple of weeks is about the Fang stocks. That was one of the reasons for our bearishness in the stock market. We've had, uh, you know, a lot of these stocks have really gotten hit you know, pretty bad. And one of the ones that we've been watching, of course, has been Google. And if you'll take a look up here, you know, Google is heading towards uh, down another 10 percent, at least with that ABCD structure, because that C level, what, that's, that uh, BC swing was exactly 0 0.382, which is the minimum Fibonacci level uh, that we look at. So uh, whether this uh, turns or not, we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to see what happens. I, you know, I, the, the grains have sold off a little bit. Folks, I don't know whether that's going to be the top in the corn market. All I did was look at the, the 1.618 expansion on the bottom, 1.618 expansion on the top. It was at the exact price. 454. The high was 454 and a half. And uh, whether that's going to mean anything or not, I really don't know. It's just a number, just like it was on the bottom. You don't know. You pays your money and you takes your choice. That's all you can do. And then move on. Uh, the cattle market is still trying to find a bottom. I haven't done anything in the cattle for quite some time. I'll wait for the bottom to form. But the one that uh, is looking very interesting from a uh, standpoint of fundamentals and stuff would be the uh, the hog market. Now, this happens to be the one that I'm looking at here is June hogs, but that's not the one you'd want to be watching. You'd want to be watching August hogs. That's the one I will start following this week uh, because we're coming into June 1st, and that's something that I think is uh, going to be Pretty, uh, pretty, pretty amazing. All right, boys and girls, it's time to put your big boy pants on. We got a big one coming. I don't know if it's going to mean much, but it's got all the things that you like to see. Here's what we're looking at. This is the big daddy rabbit of all the commodities is treasury bonds and treasury notes. And as you can see, we hit the 153 level today. We're very close to 153.24. That's where you put your big boy pants on and start to sell, sell, sell. Get in there and sell, as they say in trading places. And you don't have to risk about more than a half a point, but it looks really interesting. If we take a... Uh, what do you mean that's platinum? That's not platinum. That's uh, That can't be platinum. Are you kidding me? Shut the front door. No, that was Treasury bonds. What are you talking about, TFN? That was Treasury bonds. Yeah, ZB, that was Treasury bonds. Let's take a look. Uh, so we're going to cross the pond a little bit here and go over and take a look at the German bond. Let's just move up here. And you showing, platinum is showing? Well, it's not showing in my chart. Well, let, let's go back here. And before we do that bond, let's make sure we we do the one that we're watching and uh, not screw everything up. Okay, here's the bond chart. Go a little bit slower here. Click the button. 
Okay, there's the bonds. Uh, we hit 153, I think 152.30 today. I think we're heading to 153.24. That's a three drive pattern. That's a 78% level. That's the that's the uh, pat that's the uh, what do you call it the profit objective on the head and shoulders pattern all the things that you like to see now let's go back it should have been, it should have been bonds that's right there, there's no been I don't see no platinum in there okay let's take a look here at the German bond this is the 30 year bond in Germany and we're going to bring it up so you can see it here. Here is the bond. Now, this is the ABCD structure from um, the end of from the end of February. The market went up, came down to a 61% retracement. ABCD structure. That was a really nice Gartley level there. That's what we were looking at when we were watching the bonds of the head and shoulders pattern. And then today we went up and we made that ABCD pattern. So uh, these interest rates are getting ready to turn down. What do you mean no bond yet? I'm holy cow, we got major problems here. Just a second. I'm seeing the bond. I think I am anyway. Well, maybe not. Hold on just a second. Doggone it. Just a second here. What's going on? I thought I had all these technical problems done, but evidently not. Okay, here is the bond. Mr. Bill is seeing the bond, so somebody's seeing the bond. Anyway. <laughs> well, okay, that's it. Anyway, I think we're getting really close here. Uh, in the uh, in the bonds, whether whether that means anything to the stock market or not, the correlation there goes back and forth. I don't know if it means a whole lot or not, but uh, we're going to be coming down here to some pretty strong support here, and the stocks is a little bit lower down at that 2730 level. Well, Al, I can tell you this: I can see it, and everybody else seems to be seeing it. So I don't know what's happening over there at your place because it's uh, it's showing uh, the bond is up. The bond is up. I'll be darned. Al, oh, I got it. Al, it just came through. You haven't paid your subscription. Get your check in the mail, Bubba. All right. Let's move on here to a couple other things. Uh, what, th this one's the main one on my watch list, folks, is this interest rate thing with the bonds because I I hear all kinds of rhetoric about why negative interest rates are nothing new. Uh, uh, the history that I've read, I've never seen it before. It doesn't make any sense to me that you would pay someone to hold your money and they not pay you anything for it at all. So I'll mess with you. I think Al is Al's probably teasing me a little bit. Anyway, Al's the number one guy in my book. Anyway, we'll try to get some of these others working here. When we come back, I want to uh, I cover one other thing on August Hogs, and then we'll be uh, we'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently 
currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, we had a request from one of our listeners in Nova Scotia to why I have been so bearish since Mark, March, May 1st in the stock market. It had nothing to do with sell in May and go away. It had to do with the things that I was seeing in the market. I posted the Hang Seng, which is very important, folks, because that's the doorway into China. The big boys over there in China, they move their money through Hong Kong. And when you see stuff like this, you have to pay you know, very close attention to it. You notice we made that 61% retracement uh, there on May 1st. We've come down really quite sharply. We're trading below. Uh, 27,000 now. Uh, that's another, you know, the bearishness that was there. That was all part of the overall divergence that we were seeing. But one of the key things was uh, a week or so ago, you'll notice here on the Hang Seng Index, we had that little three-day rally. Uh, it stopped at around uh, 28,000, rallied up to 28,500. I mean, really a dead cat bounce, very similar to what happened in late April, and then bada bing, bada boom. And we, we know, folks, we are dancing with the Fibonacci level of 618 now very, very shortly at 26,800. Below 26,800 in the Hang Seng is not going to be a good thing. So uh, just kind of keep an eye on it. That would be equivalent to what we're looking at in the S&P. Below 2,700 in the S&P would telling us that these things would be, uh, we'll be able to see uh, what's going on. Anyway, whether that's going to be the case or not, we'll have to wait and see uh, whether that's going to be. Uh, I see here now that uh, the uh, Christmas corn made 441 uh, at a high of 454. Uh, whether that's going to be a high, who knows, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, fact is, a 12% break in corn is a lot in a, in a weather market. So, Mr. Z, you might be spot on. That would certainly be the first profit objective if you sold that 454 uh, level. Now, I wanted to mention about uh, one other cross rate that uh, we haven't, cop uh, haven't uh, yes, we did. Hold on a second. I've already covered that cross rate. I wanted to do the other one. Oh dear, haven't been able. Oh, here's what I wanted to cover. This is this is really important. This is from our good friend uh, Dennis Gartman of the Gartman Letter, one of the most expensive and most well-read letters uh, across the board. Uh, I think he gets something like 300 bucks a month for this puppy. But if you notice here that uh, he posted the S&P 500 here on the weekly chart, uh, showing those uh, the three little humps there. Uh, that is nothing more than a three-drive pattern. We've seen that before uh, somewhere. Let's just take a look uh, and see if that's the thing we're looking at. Well, by golly, here it is. It's it's a very popular pattern. Many, many technicians look at it, and it is a three-drive pattern. We have drive one in January of 2018, drive two in August of 2018, and then we had the last one on May the 1st. And as you can see here, the 382 retracement on this move comes in at 2730, folks. That's the key level to look at. That's the ABCD. That's the bottom line. That's, that's, uh, that's where the game is played at that point, because below that, below that, boys and girls, that is not a good sign. 
Whether that's going to happen or not, don't know. You know what else? I don't care. I want to wait till I get to that spot, and then we'll we'll watch it uh, very very closely. I did want to mention uh, one other stock market that is uh, important to those folks down under, and that is the Australian. Um, 2000, that's the equivalent of our S&P 500. And you'll be able to see here that you're looking at a, a three drive pattern up here uh, and completing really nicely. And you'll notice that this is a weekly chart going back to 2015. And you can see the highs are lining up right at this week. So you've got a You've got a one, two, three, you've got a three drive pattern that, oh my goodness, that's also a uh, reverse point wave. Look at the green triangle where it starts. That's point one down to point A, that's two, up to point three. You take out point two at uh, looks like the 61% retracement of the 2015 low. And where are you now? You're at a 1.27 of that. This market should start down right now in the Australia. This is one of the few uh, markets that's been going up. Uh, it's defied everything. So, uh, you know, it's doing pretty good. Anyway, this should be very, very close here in that Australian weekly. So sort of pay attention to that. That would be uh, really interesting to see if that is going to, to be the case. All right. That is going to be, let me see here what we've else we've got here that I wanted to think. Oh, one other reason why I the overall bearishness was, to me, it was really quite apparent. But, you know, I'm not a you know, I don't follow the fundamentals, but here was the transportation. You know, here we had a market that here on May 1st, making a right shoulder, just absolutely perfect in time from your left shoulder to your head, your head to your right shoulder, exactly at the 78% level. You take out the highs of August by, uh, what, what, five or 10 points, and then you roll over, and it's continued to come down. Those were just the divergence that I was seeing when you looked at those folks uh, to see what's going on. Uh, LYC is an Australian miner, but I don't know how to find an Australian miner, even if it was under a rock, Terry, so I'm very, very, uh, uh, very sorry. The utilities, I believe so, but the utilities are running into the same thing that we're running. <laughs> Hold on just a minute. Uh, just give me a second here to get the utility chart up here, and uh, we'll get this up here and uh, pull it up. You'll see the three drive pattern here in the utilities. Uh, we could easily get up just a little bit higher, and then that should be it. There's an ABCD pattern there. That's a very symmetrical uh, pattern here, folks. You've got one, two, three, three drives to a top. Uh, you're, you know, you're almost at the 1.618 expansion. I don't know where it's trading right now. Let's just, uh, let's just double check to see if the utilities got that high because that might be, that might be spot on. So let's just take a quick look here at what we're looking at, and we will be watching here one second here. Bada bing, bada boom. Transportations. Uh, oh, nope. We want utilities. We'll get that up. There's a trading at 820. Well, by golly, we hit it right on the money and backed off. Son of a gun. Well, you know, those are that's going down too, folks. We hit that uh, 8811. That was the number, and now we're trading at 792. That that's not a good sign either. So that's what I'm seeing from the cheap seats. So let's sort of pay attention to it. Um, the uh, main thing is, I wonder, I wanted to mention to you today, folks, that uh, you know, when I post something on the artificial intelligence, you know, it's just a probability, just like everything else. I mean, all of this stuff that I'm doing here is related to probabilities. Nothing more, nothing less. I don't know what else to uh, to say, but uh, you know, it's just uh, take responsibility and do it. You know, that's you know, that's the bottom line. I enjoy coming in here to TFNN and giving you information. Uh, fortunately, I don't get too many rotten uh, vegetables thrown at me, but I expect that in the business. But uh, it's all about pattern recognition and ratios and, and, and probabilities, folks. That's all it is. Uh, I wish I knew which patterns were going to work more than another's, but I don't really know. But uh, that's you know that's the way the game is played. It's all about uh, it's all about risk control. How much are you going to risk? It's just like that slot machine. If you look at it, it says I've taken in 1.2 million dollars more than I've given out. Nor nor does it ever say. Uh, 
<laughs> That's absolutely true, Al. Al just sent me something quite funny. Anyway, but it's a, a slot machine, you know, doesn't say on the front of it that you have no chance of beating me long term. It doesn't tell you that. So, but the thing is, you can put $20 in and take your choice, but it's entertainment. Don't put $200 in. Folks, about 15 years ago, they had credit card uh, machines over in Las Vegas. That lasted about six months. And it was a financial disaster for the city. Ooh, really bad juju, bad karma. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, I wanted to bring to your attention the uh, one right here you'll be able to see. Uh, this is the uh, utilities index that we just posted. You'll notice that, that 1.618 level that we marked up there at 813, that was the exact high uh, three days ago. And now we're starting to, uh, you know, back off. And, uh, you know, it's going to be uh, telling us whether we're going to be uh, uh, going lower. But right now it certainly has. There should be some support coming in at around 780 in the utilities. But it's really about the bonds here because the bonds are getting ready to make this 153.24. That's mother God and country, folks. Uh, you can't ask for a better payment than that. So pay very, very close attention to that. I'll post that bond chart one more time because it's worth the whole price of admission here. Uh, remember, on the long-term basis, this is actually, uh, okay, hold on just a second here. <laughs> there we go. 
Uh, you'll see uh, that's uh, everything you could ask for. It's the objective of the head and shoulders pattern. It's a three drive to a top. It's a 1.618 expansion. It's a 78% percent uh, percent, uh, percent re <laughs> 78 percent retracement of the whole thing. So that's why it's so important. So watch those bonds. The German bond has already made the objective. So we're, we're the one that's lagging here. We're now above 153. We're about 20 pips away. Any more weakness in the stock market would probably, you know, be a flight to quality or whatever they call that stuff. Whether you're going to, you know, use zero interest rates or negative interest rates, uh, you know, whatever remains to be seen. Who knows? Remember, it's all about probability, folks. It's not about certainty. It never will be. It never shall be. And it shouldn't ever be. So pay close attention because whatever it will be shall be. And if it is, it will be. And if it cannot be, it shall be. So that's the way it reads here from Caddyshack, one of my favorite movies. Anyway, let's uh, pay a few bills today and uh, do something nice for somebody. And most importantly, live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. Mm -hmm.